Hello, hello, how are you? I will just quickly get organized. Hopefully, everything will be working on our favor today. Okay, I can see people joining. Thank you so much. Our communication with you. Hello, hello. Hi, Kriya. Hi, Martina. Great to see you. <laughs> I can tell you now what happened. The cats dropped the router down. So the rover was dead for a moment. Hello, Anat. So before we start, I will just ask you kindly if you can uh, give a shout about uh, the beginning on Facebook, on Instagram, and uh, if you have any friends that they would like to learn a little bit more about the waxes, that will be the great moment to tell them about it. Hmm. Hello everyone, welcome to my studio. For all of you who are not familiar with me, my name is Anna Dobrowska Penkocka, I'm Polish and I live in Ireland and I am a uh, Finovar and I am the uh, creator of Finovar brand for Primo Marketing and uh, you are in my home studio in Ireland at the moment. So thank you so much for joining, thank you so much for uh, watching and I hope that you are going to um, get all of your questions answered during this live stream. It's not going to be very long because um, it's more about uh, showing you what uh, can the waxes do and what is uh, really the point of having them in the tubes. So I'm going to explain um, the reasons behind the new packaging and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about them. At this point we have I think 26 colors of uh, waxes and um, they are... Uh, 26 colors of the waxes in tubes. They are replacing the tins, uh, which you probably seen before. And I'm going to show you also how you can use the wax. So if you are the wax newbie, if you don't know uh, much about them, this is going to be the right moment to learn how to use them, for example, as well. Hello, everybody. I'm so, so happy to see you here. Thank you so much for joining. And again, if it's possible, uh, I would ask you if you can uh, give the video the thumb up so we go more visible on uh, YouTube because algorithm is not on our side in the last weeks. And if you can, please share that in the Finovan Friends Open Studio group on Facebook. If you can share on um create with Prima um, as well. So the groups where people are looking for these information, that will be very, very helpful. So uh, maybe I will just start and um, uh, make sure that uh, I will see who is with us. I can see Anat, uh, my design team member. She is here. She's going to help if you have any questions. She's also able to drop the links here. And we've got people joining from all over the world. I can see we've got people from UK and from uh, Netherlands and from uh, Germany and from, of course, um, Ireland. This is me. And then I've seen ladies from uh, South America as well. And hello, hello to my patrons, because I can see a lot of familiar faces joining as well. Oh, New Zealand. I'm afraid to ask what time it is in New Zealand now, but I think it's a major time difference. So it's very early in the morning. Ah, uh, yes, Wales. And of course, United States, Texas. So, um, guys, thank you so much and welcome to the studio. Uh, yesterday I was streaming as well. And if you didn't uh, watch the stream yesterday, I was uh, encouraging everybody to alter the toys. And um, if you uh, if you want to see the project from yesterday, 
Jest na stole, możesz mi podać? Um, I will just show you now. So maybe in a spare time moment you were going to watch yesterday's video. It's a like free class and you can learn about techniques of uh, altering this uh, kind of object. Of course, all of these techniques you can um, use on other objects as well. So this is something that uh, may be a good video to watch when you have um, you know, spur longer, longer time. So when you are busy doing something, maybe when you are creating, because it is over, it's two and a half hours, but you can see all that done step by step. Um, this is based on mica powders, uh, opalescent mica powders uh, from Finovar collection. And of course, some art mediums and uh, embellishments and molds. So that is ready. Yesterday, I was just doing one side of the horse, but later, of course, I didn't go to sleep until I finished. And I took the photos today, so they're going to uh, they're going to be available to watch on my Instagram and on my uh, Facebook page and my Facebook account later today. Uh, and yes, yes, both sides ready. So you can see I painted and I finished. So now let's talk about the waxes. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. I will just put the horse in the safe place. And um, of course, some of you uh, know waxes already. <laughs> I hope some of you tried them already. And well, thank you, Maria. I think this horse was really fun to make. It was uh, quite entertaining for me. Hello, Karen. Oh, I can still people joining. So <laughs> I was sure like five, 10 minutes is enough, but apparently not. So, uh, all the questions about the uh, uh, waxes. First of all, so far waxes were on the market in tins, which are kind of convenient uh, solution because it's easy to put your finger inside and scoop and put the brush inside as well. Some people know they have the uh, kind of sweet and um, vanilla like smell. This is to cover the natural, natural smell of the waxes. And uh, they came in a huge range of colors and three different, now four different variations. And gradually, because these waxes are one of the most popular products uh, for mixed media I've made, we are going to replace them with the tubes. And this is because we were... Uh, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much for joining. Um, Maria just joined my uh, channel as my fan. That is the way of giving me a tip. So thank you, thank you so much for tipping me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Huge hearts. And uh, talking about the uh, waxes. Uh, no, if the wax, the smell is gone, it's just gone. It is not the damage. What we did originally, the smell of the wax is not so pleasant. Most of people would say, it is not their favorite. It is because it's natural beeswax and this is also mixed with pigments and micas and other ingredients which uh, provide the proper consistency. And it's not possible to make it without any smell. And um, if you have similar product and it's without any smell, it's probably water-based. So this is different product. Wax is based on the wax. So it is permanent after drying, not possible to uh, remove. So this one is hello hilda so this one um is always with the background smell and by adding extra smell on the top we are just covering a pleasant smell so that is one of the important things about the waxes second is the consistency which is quite creamy which makes the application and dry brushing easier and the third important thing is uh, the permanency so this is finishing product. This is the uh, product you should apply as last step on your project because it's very hard to paint on the top something that is resisting the water. This is water resisting. It's like shoe polish. Or if you prefer, this is cousin of furniture wax. So that means this wax is going to make a protective cover on your project. 
it's going to resist the water. It's once dry, it is very hard to remove, almost impossible. So you don't need any varnishing as well. All that turned the waxes into one of the most popular products. People love them for finishing. They love them for uh, adding uh, metallic um, highlights. They like them for creating textures or simply just applying them as a main color. And there were um, some concerns, of course. Some people were saying the tins are uh, maybe not the most convenient packaging. Of course, there were questions, what happens if they dry up? You can use some mineral oil or turpentine to revive them, but it's, of course, uh, not great uh, when it happens. So it was, it takes very long time for this one to dry. And I never had ones that dried completely on me, but I can imagine it may happen. Uh, so that was one of the things. Some people were also concerned about contamination because you put your fingers inside. So we decided to improve the packaging and we decided to put the wax into small metal tube, which means you can take only the portion that you want to use at uh, this time. And the amount of air that is going to interact with the product is so tiny. It is not really possible to um, dry up the product by accident if you leave it for a couple of hours without closing. It's still going to be fresh. Of course, the same happens here. It's not going to be dry, but uh, this is the uh, main reason. We decided to extend the shelf life of the product and um, to make it mm, easier for application for people who just want a little bit for a small project. What I did before the class, uh, the class, well, I had the class yesterday, see? <laughs> I'm so in the teaching mode now. So what we did, uh, we repacked all the, new, um, all the colors that were out of stock into the new packaging. So now when you reorder, uh, you may see the tube as a final packaging already. Uh, Prima is now putting them on the website. They literally came into the warehouse last week and this uh, weekend and this week there should be put uh, in the tubes for uh, sale on Prima. So uh, all the shops, all the wholesalers, they can order the tubes already. And uh, of course, I will show you how to use the tubes. I will tell you which colors are already in the tubes so you can see them. And I'm very, very uh, happy to answer all of the questions as well. So my plan is, first of all, I prepared swatches. Um, so I put the colors on the pieces of molds already so you can see which colors are in the tubes. I will show you how to uh, use them the easiest way, the way I do it. And then to make it more fun, I will uh, wax this project for you so you can see how quickly you can turn a canvas into or the collage or home decor object into something else using art alchemy waxes. Um, if you are completely new to waxes, this may be a very valuable part of the presentation because you will see how they really work on the project. Okay, so what I did before, just to let you know, I used some of the Prima and uh, Finavara molds to create this composition. I glue it down on the canvas and I painted everything with black gesso. So this is ready. I have it done. So I will switch the view of the camera to the top. Yeah. So you have a look at my table now. Yeah, hopefully just adjusting. Perfect. And I will show you everything closer. So it's going to be much easier for you to see the details. First of all, the packaging. Um, the wax is going to be available now in the um, blister like that. So on the back, you're going to have uh, information what is the color like in real life so there's usually one of the photos I prepared where you can see a bit of wax usually on the teaspoon and then a little bit of the wax project as well for inspiration and of course all the information that has to be on the packaging depending on the country then uh, of course in the front the name of the color this is all silver 
and then um, the group, because they have four groups. They are metallics, opal magic, antique brilliance, and uh, matte waxes. So, to, you know, not, nothing is changing here. If you compare the packaging, it is just the shape that is changing, and of course, the way uh, we are going to take them out, right? So the tin is turning into the tube. And um, waxes, of course, because they're a popular product, they are um, also um, to, said to be one of the long, the, probably the longest lasting product for coloring. They go much longer than the acrylic paint because you only use so little. And because you only use so little, uh, yes, the tins will be discontinued. Uh, because they are so, uh, you take so little, it is convenient to just take them out uh, here. So what is going to happen um, when you want to apply it? I'm going to show you what I do. And I will show you all the colors, of course. There was a question if the tints are going to disappear. Yes. Uh, once we reorder the colors, for example, this is uh, rose gold from the reordered um, batch, it's going to be gradually changed into tubes. So uh, sooner or later, uh, the tins are going to disappear from the market. And if you have your tins, of course, you can use them <laughs> as long as you want. Some people said they're even going to keep the tins because they want to put waxes in the tins for working on the table. And that is going to be also a great solution because once the tin is empty, you can just squeeze a little bit inst instead of palette and just keep your color there even if you have some leftovers for the next time. So that is a great solution. And uh, if you have the collection of the tins, this is what you can do. And of course, I highly recommend. So now, uh, what to use for the application? I usually suggest to use uh, brushes. These are the brushes I made for Prima from Art Basics line. They're typically done for waxes and they come in different sizes. Sometimes for details, I just use regular small brush, but I always pick the one that is old and nobody loves it anymore. So this is an option. And of course, fingers. Um, to take the waxes out, of course, first we have to uh, make sure we are going to uh, prick that uh, film. This is metal film that you need to open. And um, this is going to be super easy. It's very similar how you open the toothpaste or some glues that are already on the market. And uh, when you open that, of course, closing is super easy. We all know the system. <laughs> so that is going to prevent the air from getting into the product. So that is going to extend the shelf life of the wax. And that also means you are going to have your soft wax a little bit longer. Well, maybe probably far longer. Uh, I tested the tubes for a long time and their results were really good. The wax stays soft. And of course, remember when you're going to squeeze it out, start from the bottom. So you are going to have easier access and it's going to be easier to uh, hmm, control the situation because if you squeeze like that, you know what happens. You try to be a little bit more careful. So now um, let's look first at the colors which we have in metallic range already. And I'm just going to take them one by one. This is rose gold I was showing you. So... Uh, yeah, joyful creations. Why not? You can totally do that. I would just do it gradually. So uh, this is rose gold, the one that I was showing you as an example. I'm trying to put them in the place where you can see them. Next color coming back in the tube is Bronze Age, very lovely brown uh, sh uh, shade of uh, vintage steampunk color. I made the swatches before, so this is a little bit easier for me because it would be so boring to look at me waxing every single one, I guess. And next from the popular colors is the vintage gold. 
vintage gold. As you can see, even on the tube, there is representation of the product, which is quite cool. So vintage gold is coming in the tubes already. Then we've got brushed iron. Brushed iron is the darker tone, which is similar to like steel or lead, something that um, you would probably use to imitate natural look of the metal. And this is already in the tubes as well. Then from natural colors, brass, aged brass, uh, already coming in the tubes as well. This is lighter in tone, just to compare to uh, bronze age and more brown than vintage gold. So you can see this is completely different color. Next is white gold. Uh, white gold is a bit like champagne. Um, it's something between silver and gold. Very, very popular color, also already in the tubes. Then from the tubes, we also have, uh, sorry, <laughs> peacock. This was one of the most popular colors from the colorful release because I made a release when we started to go with the crazy colors of the waxes and peacock was super, super popular. Then from the same range of the colorful waxes, old denim, so the darker denim blue color. We also have mint sparkle, which is lovely mint, light green with the tiny bit of gold color a sparkle in it. Absolutely beautiful. And then two strong Indian pink. This is a very intense, rich uh, tone of fuchsia pink color. Absolutely amazing. Already in the tube. And electric violet, again, super rich, beautiful tone of uh, wax from the um, metallic collection. So that would be what is available now in the tubes, but I didn't show you how to apply it. So I'm going to just give you a quick example. I have old silver in the tube. And I will show you how you can apply that on the top of your project. So let's say I want to wax it to create the same swatch as we have here. I will just use the dry brush. And my plan is to open the tube. This was already opened, of course. Squeeze a little bit and I'm squeezing from the bottom. Yeah, for example, like this, just a tiny bit you need. I can close it. And then first, before I'm going to do anything, I will make sure the wax goes deep, deep, deep in the brush. So that means we don't have like a lump of wax on the top. This is really important when you are planning doing dry brushing. I'm just basically rubbing the wax into the brush and then I'm applying the wax deeply. This is like full coverage technique. So with this amount of wax, I can go quite far. These resin elements will just it with clear gesso first. So it is very easy for me to do that technique. I didn't have to do anything in front of you. I just pre-waxed it, sorry, pre gessoed it, but uh, if you're using plastic or glass or metal, like this, you can see it's so shiny, before applying acrylic paint or wax or any other medium, it's very good to start with gesso. It's going to have better grip. To compare the color of the old silver to brushed iron, you can see the difference right away. So these are the metallic colors and Another important uh, group, and you were was asking about it uh, just a moment ago, these are the matte waxes. Matte waxes are all in the tubes already. So we've got rusty brown. You can see completely different finish. If you 
Look at this brown and this brown. This is metallic. This is completely flat. So I'm going to put them here. Then, of course, are the colors a little bit brighter? No, they are exactly the same. The formula is exactly the same as it was. It's a tiny bit more creamy, so it's easier to squeeze it out from the tube, but we kept the smell, the formula, and the colors. So there is this uh, patina blue in matte. This is rusty red. Maybe this is just, I have a lot of good light here and that's why I you could see it was a little bit brighter. Rusty red. Then of course, uh, old white in the tube, I applied it on the black gesso. So you can see it is uh, not completely covering color. This is more like um, uh, semi-transparent white, completely matte. You can use it for lovely shabby chic effects. And then charcoal, charcoal, which is graphite, um, lovely color for doing the shades. So this is another popular color in the matte waxes. Together with the white, it is uh, very, very popular. And to show you how they work, I've got here patina green. Again, the same story. Let's have a look. I'm just going to use different brush now because this is still dirty and I will talk about cleaning the brushes in a moment. So again, squeezing out a little bit, not too much. You can see they are very creamy and they look the same as in the tins. And what happens with the matte waxes because they have this mating agent, they don't look so smooth as the um, uh, waxes which are metallic. But once you rub that into your brush and start waxing, everything goes creamy and smoothly. So a little bit of the visual grain is not going to be a problem because you rub that grain into um, the wax anyway. So this is patina green. Ready? <laughs> you can see it, it's, it's really quick. So if you have this full coverage technique on your mind, this goes quickly when you use the brush. Okay. Next, I have to clean my hand because now when I take something, it's going to be very, very dirty. Of course, um, they take some time to dry. So um, if you apply them and they're very fresh, like, you know, fresh from the packaging, I would give them 10 minutes before you, I would put a, another color on the top so they have the time to get set and dry. Just like the furniture wax, the drier it is, the harder it gets and more permanent. So if you want to do double layering, and I'm going to show that in a moment, uh, it's better to wax, let it dry, don't use heat gun because heat gun is going to only heat them up even more. And just um, wait and then apply the second color on the top so they are not going to mix. From Opal Med, sorry, not Opal Magic, from um, Antique Brilliance, so two tone waxes. We have four colors so far in the tubes. So Lucky Emerald. And you can see it here. I prepared the sample, which is partly white, partly black. So you can see the difference. Lucky Emerald with the brown undertone and the green mica in it. So remember, this is wax, which is um, based on the brown uh, wax. So it's always going to have this vintage antiquing effect in it on the lighter tones that will be brown. This was the intention behind this product. So um, I think some people don't realize this is the concept of the product. So if you're buying this one, remember on the white, it's going to be with the brown tone in it. Okay, so uh, Lucky Emerald. Uh, I'm running out of space here, <laughs> maybe like this. Uh, second color is Fire Ruby, beautiful red wine ruby color. And of course, a little bit more brown on the white 
uh, background. So you can see you can have the effects depending on the background you are using it. Fire Ruby. Then Antique Brilliance Mystic Turquoise. And again, great example how it looks like on the black, completely beautifully blue. And then brown with the blue sparkle on the white. Very interesting effect. You get, in fact, two effects in one tube. And the last one is Red Amber. And this one I'm going to... Uh, put for you so you can see how it works. I just try to move the waxes a little bit up because I'm running out of space on my table. <laughs> so uh, there is still one color which is not repacked in the tube. It is Amethyst Magic and this is purple tone, but I'm sure once it is out, um, you are going to have it in the tube as well. So if you open, you know, this one has the brown undertone. Look, so there may be some small, small uh, breathing or separation. If it happens, when once we put it out on the palette, then we remove the problem completely because we have to pick it up with the brush. You don't have to worry at all. Uh, red amber is uh, like fiery, red orange color and results are like copper, super super intense copper so if you are looking for this kind of effect um, red amber is for you just to compare how it does look like with the um, ruby because ruby is much, much more uh, red wine into deep red color, while the red amber is more coppery orange. Okay. So that is the almost the last group. And the last ones that we started repacking into the tubes, they are the Opal Magic waxes. Again, I have to clean my hand. Please uh, give me a moment. Yeah, baby wipes are quick solution when you have to clean your hands. Oh, hello, hello. Welcome to all of you who are joining. I will do, do the quick recap just in a moment once I finish the swatch, okay? And the last ones, um, the last ones are here. Opal Magic waxes. Opal Magic are iridescent which means they are almost invisible on white. I didn't really do a sample on white. I will just show you how they look on white so you can see yourself. The color is almost no, not there, but I have a small sample uh, on the black so you can uh, see how they work. So far we repacked Vintage Silk, which is a very delicate tone. Uh, then this would be like this. Yeah. That is like a delicate, delicate brown. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot to show you next to the <laughs> product. Then Green Brocade, which is golden green tone. Something which is... Um, Something between gold and green, I would say this is the best solution. So it's description. Blue velvet. Ah, oh, here. Blue velvet, which is intense bluish purplish tone. This is new, uh, new packaging of the blue velvet. Color is exactly the same as in the tin. This is just uh, the packaging that is different. Royal robes which is hmm, purpley fuchsia pinky color, right? So something bit more, more purple than violet, I would say. That would be the best description. Again, very intense. And the last one is turquoise, turquoise satin, bluish greenish aqua tone. And this one I will apply for you on the... Mm, 
on the wing I prepared, uh, painted with black gesso and uh, painted, sorry, and painted with clear gesso. So you can compare the effect. I try to have to put it a little bit more up so you can see what I'm doing because we are running out of space on that table. So the colors, um, they were on the market before, of course, but uh, now once we are changing the packaging, you can see the representation of the color also on the photo, on the tube, which is great. It's one of the advantages of this kind of packaging. So again, I'm taking a bit of that. You can see it doesn't look too intense. It's more like per pearly, pearly white color. So usually Opal Magics, <laughs> when they are first um, in your hands, you may feel a little bit disappointed because they look like nothing until you put them on the darker surface. On the darker surface, they turn quickly into this magical opalescent effect. Just to compare, so you're going to see what the effect is going to be here. I'm using the same wax and the same leftovers from my brush, trying to wax it as much as possible. But as you can see, all we can get is a tiny bit of sheen. So they are only for adding pearly touch and they show the real color, the real beauty when they are applied on the darker surfaces. So just to remind you the colors, such as the turquoise, turquoise satin, then royal robes, um, blue velvet, green brocade and vintage silk. These ones we have already in the tubes in the new packaging. And for those of you who are just joining now, I will uh, explain again that we are changing the packaging of the popular product, uh, Finovar waxes. And this is going to extend the shelf life of the product, which means you've got um, smaller access of the air to the product in the tube. So this is going to make the uh, product, it's going to keep the product fresher and softer for longer. Of course, you can apply it uh, more carefully just by squeezing the right amount on the palette, just I was showing to you before. And now, if you would like to see what you can do with the waxes, we are going to make some fun. I will pick some of the colors and we are going to do some waxing on the uh, prepared background and prepared canvas. I will just make some space here. So if you have any questions, uh, this is something, um, this is the right moment to ask the question. So I can do some redecoration. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the beautiful pictures on the wall behind you, these ones of the women. I can't find videos of uh, those on your channel to see them close up. Are they on Instagram? These are all, oh, these are my older projects and I have plenty of these posted on my Instagram and I also have them on my blog years ago. However, <laughs> They may be three years old, five years old, two years old project. So you would have to scroll down a little bit and you would need to uh, check them. Uh, I didn't really show them um, as a class because completing the project like that uh, is time consuming. But I have a class you can take online. And you can learn how to make this project. This is called Imagine. And this project you can um, sign up for if you go to my website. On the left sidebar, there is a link called uh, Imagine with Everything Art. And you can 
uh, take a class online and this way learn how it was all done, learn some techniques and uh, this was, I was doing exactly this project so you can uh, see how it was done step by step. I don't have so many of the online classes um, available. I'm working on that now, but if you're interested in learning my techniques, I can recommend to join me on Patreon. This is the subscription uh, paid monthly and you don't really have to remember because it comes off your PayPal automatically or your card. And you get um, videos and streams uh, during the month, which are exclusive just to patrons. And you learn techniques, you learn about uh, basics of mixed media. And uh, if you would like to have the access to videos, minimal minimum payment is 10 euro per month, which is not much. You get two videos during that uh, month for sure. And you get the access to the previews. Uh, videos from other months as well. So it's a huge package of knowledge. And if you want to get more, if you want to get more activities, another exclusive stream, there are other packages uh, included. You can pick five different tiers starting 5 euro, 10 euro, 25, 50 and 100. So you can get a lot, a lot of the knowledge through Patreon. And if you're looking that uh, looking for that options in the description of the video. There is a link to my patreon You can check it out in the free time and join our art community. We have almost 170 people now So you can be part of that as well So for your information how this one was prepared I uh, used my uh, black gesso to uh, start the canvas. Yes, thank you. Uh, Louise uh, from Thompson Craft Supplies, she's one of my patrons, so she can give you the recommendation. She uh, joined me in um, May, I think, and we have um, so far a lot, a lot of great videos cr created for you. So you can learn from the comfort of your home. And as long as you are subscribed, you have the access. So you can always come back to that and learn. And if you'd like to join, I really appreciate it because it helps me to grow as an artist and stay home and make more videos for you as well. Sorry, I had to take a sip of tea because I was talking so much. So just notes. Uh, we've got heavy body gel. <laughs> <laughs> that was my dog sleeping. <laughs> so we've got heavy body gel, which you can use to glue down these dimensional elements on your canvas. So that, that is something you can use easily. And I was using resin elements I made in my molds, of course. So I created that composition. And then uh, black gesso I used was the heavy body, uh, sorry, heavy black gesso. And um, this is dry already. I prepared that uh, two days before, so I had everything ready for you so I can quickly show you the colors. And now um, the easiest technique of applying uh, the waxes when you want to play and show the beauty is to prepare background colors and then let it dry a little bit and add the color which is going to be the highlight. So it's a combination of the brush technique and finger technique. <clears throat> I'm not, yeah, that sounds a bit funny though. And um, uh, let's start with some of the colors. We have Starry Night, so maybe we should pick some tones of blue. So it's going to prefer a uh, combination of hmm, blues and violets, like the night, right? Like the night. Uh, colors. So I'm taking Peacock, which is turquoise. I'm taking Electric Violet, which is uh, strong purple. We can maybe include a bit of the Opal Magic. So let's take Blue Velvet. Okay. These are colors. Oh, Old Denim would be good as well. So I'm just picking um, shades of blue first and I'm going to do um this basic waxing first so i always squeeze a small amount of the wax out 
not too much because a bit of wax goes very long way. So it's just a small, small drip. Also, what is important if you compare the wax uh, in the tube to wax in the tin, you will see it's just a tiny bit more soft, so it's easier to squeeze out, but it's exactly the same packaging. It is 20 milliliters, so you get the same amount of the wax in the tube and in the tin, and the price range is going to be the same as well, so there won't be huge surprises here. Okay. Yeah, I have a lot of my, of my patrons watching it uh, now, so you, I can see you are discussing. But we really have a lovely international community with, with uh, artists and crafters from all over the world. And uh, this is um, really great to have this possibility to uh, work directly with you, with you and get inspiration from your ideas as well. Oh, I think I took this one. Yeah, blue velvet. Blue velvet, as you can see, is not very impressive <laughs> until you're going to apply it. Again, the same story. Let's start with the Opal Magic Blue Velvet. We want to create starry night effect. So I'm rubbing the wax into the brush. <laughs> yeah, and then in the nice round motion, we can start waxing. This technique you can use for home decor for any purpose you like. I'm just going to combine different colors so I'm not waxing everything, but you can see how quick is the effect. Now let's change to maybe shade of blue. I'm taking the blue denim. Again, trying to rub it inside of the brush, adding more of the blue color. And I'm going deeply, deeply everywhere. So I just go on the table will be much easier. If you can't get that deep, I will come back later with the smaller brush as well. So easy. <laughs> that is the best part. It is so easy. Let's do a bit of peacock. Peacock. Peacock is lovely turquoise with the blue in it. Look at that. So magical night colors. I'm trying to get deep, deep, deep so I can get this nice palette of the colors all together. Now, when the waxes are wet, they are blending with each other. So you can have this nice soft tone to tone uh, changing colors. Okay, and then maybe a little bit more of this electric violet. So a little bit more of the purple in some parts. As you can see, this is not going to take me long to color the whole project. Ta -da! So very, very quick solution. Of course, I can use that leftovers on my brush to do the sides. I intentionally show it that on the black gesso because black gesso is great friend of waxes. Um, they really shine beautifully on the black surface, but you can use them on any color, any surface, as long as it is primed with gesso. So it's going to be matte finish. It will be very hard to take just shiny metal and go with the wax and cover with one coat. Much easier if you start with the um, gesso. So now I will let it dry for a moment. I will just go deeper, deeper with some old brush to fill these holes for you. So you don't really see that much of the black anymore. Leftovers of the peacock, maybe. So just even coloring with different tones is adding a lovely metallic 
finish to it. Of course, matte waxes would give you the matte finish. And um, I will just show you the project with the matte waxes as well, so you can compare. You can see matte finish. I, <laughs> I picked shades of blue as well, so you can see uh, blue patina with a bit of the um, charcoal color and a bit of white. There is no shine here. I added a tiny bit of the metallic silver here. I think I was doing that as a demo during one of the shows. And here, warm tones. This is wax, but in the matte finish. So you can see the same product in two different variations. Matte wax is more um, antiquing. It's uh, adding the effect like natural dirt or granginess. These all uh, effects are created with the graphite and brown rusty uh, pro, um, rusty wax and then red rust was on the top and it was um, brushed with the baby wipe. I have demo of these waxes on my channel already. I think I was doing these <laughs> or at least one of them uh, during the live stream so you can see that if you're going to go back to my channel and scroll down, find the uh, tutorial videos about the products, you can see how this was waxed with the matte waxes. That's why today I'm going to do uh, the metallic. So we prepared uh, the metallic background, shade of purples, blues, all done with the brushes so we could get deeper, deeper into the surface. And now, because usually when it happens, um, when that we apply a lot of colorful waxes, details may be lost. Here it is very crisp uh, project. There's not much texture. I picked very big elements. But if you had a lot of textures, you would probably not see much. I would recommend to finish with uh, one or two colors of the highlights, something in contrasting tone. So for example, uh, good highlighting colors will be white gold because it's light tone, rose gold, light pink, that would work. Of course, one of the best solutions is the silver because it is the lightest color so far. So we can do the silver and uh, vintage gold for more uh, steampunky colors. Because this is more like night colors, let's try to imitate the uh, color of the stars. So white gold would be great you can compare, combine it with the old silver, okay? And then let's take a bit of these two colors on the palette again. Squeeze in a delicate way, of course. Don't squeeze everything out. And then a bit of, whoa, a bit of white gold as well. Yes, um, you are right. White gold is one of the most neutral and popular uh, options. I didn't take a lot. Yeah, white gold is something between silver and gold, so everybody loves it. Yes, these will be um, at Prima this week, which means uh, you will be able, the shops are able to order from Prima Marketing this week already. If you have your sales rep, they can contact the office already and uh, place the order, I'm sure. Um, for some colors, we still have them in the older packaging, in the tins, but this is the same product, just different packaging, same uh, quality, same color, same amount, same smell. So, the new colors, there are 26 of them, I think, now in the tubes. Uh, and all of the colors which are not um, not um, replaced yet, once they're going to be done in the tins, in the warehouse, they're going to be 
uh, reordered as tubes. So I'm going to do, use my finger now to just touch the tops. Instead of brushing, I'm going to use my finger. So this way, my colors are going to create natural shadow and the highlighting color is going to show the textures. And I prefer to use my hand as a palette. This is my way of doing things. But this is just giving me the control on how much of the wax I have on my finger. And this is like the easiest possible technique to highlight the details. And I'm just using a bit of silver and a bit of white gold. These are sold individually in a tube. They're not in sets because um, I think it's much easier to really pick the colors you like because there are so many. So far, I didn't hear there would be any plans to make the sets, but if it's going to be huge demand for the sets, uh, of course there is a chance, but they were so far on the market as singles and um, they were very successful as singles. So I'm not sure if we need to have them in sets, but you know, customers are always right. So if you're going to start mess messaging Prima saying we want them in sets, it's quite possible they are going to create a set for you. I'm... When I pick the colors, when I create the new formulas, I think more about them as single colors that are going to be different to the ones we had before. So that's why uh, I never really thought about that. And now I can even now add a tiny bit in the corners. I still use the leftovers I have on my finger. A tiny bit of wax goes very, very long way. You can see I'm even highlighting the textures of the canvas because I'm working on stretched canvas and they are able to pick up those little grains as well. So the easiest possible way to use the waxes. This is like a basic technique. Wax on the wax. Of course, instead of wax, on the wax, you can start with acrylic paint of your choice. And then once the acrylic paint is dry, you can use the waxes as a finishing product. Of course, the most important thing is you should not paint with acrylic or any other paint on the top because this is resisting water. So um, if you take, just for example, let's take um, the wing that I had before and um, this is already dry you can rub it with the baby wipe as you can see i'm rubbing 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 and it's i probably have to rub for a very long time until it will start to come off but it doesn't want to really i don't know how long i have to rub it is working as um, almost like a protective coat because it is the cousin of the furniture wax so it doesn't really like the paint if you, if you put something wet on the top, let's do some paint here. This is liquid acrylic paint. Uh, yeah, they are not going to be spreading nicely. They are just going to like, sit on the top and you can get some results, but this is not going to be super successful. You can just rub it off. So quickly without any problem. This is water resistant. Once you have your waxes on, uh, you should just maybe do some tiny touches, some splatters and use them as a finished uh, product. So I hope this presentation was helpful for you. Um, the, the most important information is waxes in the tubes are improved packaging and uh, ver this kind of version of the packaging that will extend the shelf life and it's going to make the application more controllable comparing to the tins. And also, of course, uh, it is um, very hard to make any contamination of the product as well. So those of you who are concerned that maybe people 
especially if you're sharing the product, are putting dirty fingers in the wax and then uh, it is contaminated, it is going to uh, be eliminated with the tubes because you only squeeze that tiny amount that you need for one uh, dip. And um, of course, the formula, smell and everything else is the same. There was nothing to improve here because it was really great. And I just made that quick application for you. So if you're not familiar with the product, um, please check my previous videos because when I, we were releasing new colors, I was making demos of the waxes and that includes the demo of the uh, matte waxes as well. So they are applied similar way, of course, but you can do some antiquing effects with them as well. And you can learn more of uh, the techniques. The same product, different packaging. And um, I will just check now if you have any more questions on it. I will just sit and say my <laughs> goodbyes to you. Hello again. Ah. Thank you so much for coming. I hope this was um, this was helpful. I know some of you were really wondering what would be the difference between the tube and the tin. So I was thinking it's much easier when I will just show you everything. And for the newbies, the people who don't know the product, um, it is great option to see how they really work uh, in action. <laughs> so I think this um, this change is going to be very uh, successful. It's going to be a great idea because if you're concerned about drying time, is uh, concerned about uh, the tins getting leaking uh, for some of you, it all depends on the temperature as well, of course. Uh, this may be much easier. Of course, they come sealed on the top, so there will be no chance something is going to leak because there is metal seal on each tube. Um, there's also new information on the packaging, which may be uh, important for some of you who live in a cold, uh, sorry, hot countries. Where did I put this packaging? The blister. It is about info about the temperature. And uh, as far as remember, they suggest it's better to keep them uh, in the cooler places, which is under 35 degrees centigrade. And that means don't leave them in the hot room, maybe in the direct sunshine, because uh, this is the, it's making them softer and the sub, oh, I can see it. And the separation of the mica and the base is going to happen faster. So that was the reason of the leaking in some of the tins, especially the matte waxes, which have extra pigment. This was separating because of the hotter temperatures. So, do not store over 32 degrees Celsius, which is 86 Fahrenheit. And of course, it's not going, they're going to get spoiled. It's just, they're going to get softer. So for the best, uh, for the best results, if it's super hot, keep them in a cool place. If you really can see they are uh, getting separated in the, yeah, they just melt a little bit like wax, uh, put them in a cool place. Some people keep them in the fridge. I know that from girls from Australia. <laughs> so uh, it's not like it's damaged to the product because they're not damaged. You just have to mix them again because the separation happens. There are some very uh, hot uh, places, very hot and very humid. And I know for you making mixed media is a challenge because sometimes the paint doesn't want to dry or things are getting moldy really quickly, or you can't really leave things outside because of the tropical weather. So if you know that um, your, um, your country, your, uh, your locality is like that, it's generally a good rule to keep your art mediums such as paints or uh, waxes or gels away from the heat. So not leaving them in the direct sunshine, not in the most hot part of the room, if it's possible, it's going to extend their life. It's not going to um, kill them if you leave them there, of course, but it's going to extend the life if they're in the cooler place. And that is, uh, you know, that is the, just a good tip. Like for me, 
my biggest problem here in Ireland is uh, winter time, nothing dries because it's cold and humid. So if I don't put my heating on and I leave my project on the table in the studio, nothing is going to dry because it's too wet and too cold. And we don't really have the problem with storing any of the products because uh, as, as far as they're away from the heater, they're fine. But I would not leave them just next to the heating uh, unit because that will make the drying faster. And I would not leave them in front of my uh, stove. Here's the stove with the open fire. So I hope that helps. Uh, of course, information is on the packaging. The new tubes are coming to the stores in the next weeks and um, gradually all the colors that are going to be reordered are going to turn into that packaging. I hope you like it. I had very good response to that information and uh, a lot of you told me that you are happy. Uh, yes, Karen, thank you. That you are happy about uh, this change. And Karen reminded me, I promised you uh, to tell you about the brushes, right? Of course, hands and brushes. Uh, we've got a um, permanent product on the brush once we finish. This product is greasy and uh, it's not so easy to clean it off just uh, using water. So the best solution is to get um, good quality strong soap. I usually use Hmm, grey soap. Uh, it's olive oil based soap, basic soap that was used um, in the households years ago for cleaning. The one in the big, big uh, bars that is just regular soap. You don't need any special brush soap for that. Savon de Marseille, exactly this is the one I'm using. How did you know? Okay, okay that is true. Once I went to France, and I was in Marseille. <laughs> I went with um, one of the ladies who were organizing to the factory. And once I saw all that soaps, I only use that soap in my house now for everything. I have the soap for brushes and I have bars, almost ni nice smelling ones for body. And I've got hand soap. So it is oil, olive oil based soap, but any other good soap is going to work and hot water. Hot water is the key. It's the same as washing dishes when you have oily pan after frying. You can use instead of soap shampoo or you can use dishwashing liquid. These are going to remove the grease quickly. So if you don't have soap you use for your brushes, you can get a bit of shampoo or you can get your dishwashing liquid add hot water and then I just dip it in that water and I clean it on my hands so all that wax is coming off. Hot water as hot as you can handle and grease remover, soap, dishwashing liquid or shampoo. This way you get to results like that. It's not going to be super clean but it's going to be clean enough so you can get the color a uh, different color on the brush without any damages. Um, it's not a big problem if you change the wax from Opal Magic to metallic, for example, because Opal Magics are delicate and then metallics are going to cover that anyway. But switching between metallics and Opal Magics the other that way, it's very important you're going to clean this off. Metallics are super covering, so you want to clean the brush before you switch to other colors. This, sorry, the same with the mattes. Mattes is uh, quite strong, there's pigment in it, so it may stain your fingers. Some of the metallics may stain your fingers. Use, you know, use the hot water and soap and then dry the brush with the paper towel. I usually just go like many times. Now I'm even, um, yeah. Yes, the pigments are always, dyeing the hair of the of the brushes so you don't have to worry about that once you have your brush more or less dry you can continue with other colors i usually have um two or three brushes on hand when i work with the waxes so i can swap between colors okay so um if you have any questions you can ask uh, also in prima 
group there is create with prima group on facebook and if you're a retailer there are groups uh, for retailers and you can get this information about shipping and uh, ordering for the stores uh, directly in those groups you can contact your salesperson as well so if you are planning to order that for your shop i know these are already in the warehouse you just need to uh, maybe get the order form or uh, wait until they're going to be visible on the Prima website. For the customers who are uh, waiting to get them into the shops, I would say two weeks maximum. So it's going to be shipped uh, from the shop, uh, so, sorry, from Prima to the shops and they are going to be available on the shelves in your local stores. Okay? Thank you, thank you very much for joining. Um, please check my previous videos. Check my stream from yesterday. Maybe you would like to uh, join our challenge and um, you would like to learn how I altered my wooden horse. This is a really pretty project, so I am quite excited. And um, you can now uh, just wait patiently uh, for them to come back. I know some of the colors were out of stock, for longer time so it would be the great moment to grab them now once they are back in the tubes yeah thank you thank you so much if you have any more questions or you are watching that after we finished you can ask the question in the comments uh, under the video and i will come back to that video and i will try to answer these questions as well thank you so much guys and if you can share that with your friends so they can learn about the waxes if you have your local store that would like to know uh, there's information send them the link to this live stream and everything is going to be easier and available thank you thank you so much for joining see you soon bye bye bye